Listening to the president speak about agriculture, the macroeconomy, education, health, he seemed pretty confident in his first term. Before we talk about what he's saying, what is the NDC's message for this election? Because it's less than a year. What is your, when you meet Ghanaians, the pres vice, former president is in, I think it was in Western North the other time. What is the core of his message to Ghanaians? Two things, or let me say three things. First of all, we are presenting a presidential candidate who has by far a superior record on all issues of our national life, whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is roads, whether it is industry. All issues. He has a superior record wow. in all these you know, critical sectors mm -hmm. of you know, the nation. He has done it before. He has that credibility. And we are telling Ghanaians that if you give him the opportunity again, he mm -hmm. will ensure that this country sees development and progress again. So he has because a superior we record. Because mm -hmm. what we have witnessed under President Kufuado is a retrogression. It is a decline of our country. So you prove this and during we, this we will demonstrate that to and you. throughout the I, campaign. I will demonstrate that to you. Yes. Again, Number we two. are going to fight this election mm -hmm. and win this election on the basis of our superior alternatives. Because okay. President Mahama is a man of vision. Okay. And he has the right alternative policies and programs which can transform this country, create jobs for the teaming unemployed mm. youth of this country, and create prosperity for the people of this country. Hopefully you show me some of the alternatives we here. We will be articulating some of these things in the campaign. So and superior record here. Superior his alternatives. Record, superior record and above all. Yes. His sincerity, his humility as an individual is something we treasure. Sincerity and humility Sincerity as an and individual. Humility because, because that is what we lack currently. The leadership we are experiencing in this country is leadership of dishonesty, the leadership of deception, leadership of arrogance, Arro where we are seeing <laughs> you know, arrogance of power. Okay. People think that this country belongs to them. They say mm. they are the true owners of the country, mm -hmm. and they will not allow a certain group of people to ever come back again. We don't think like that. And that is why, as I speak to you, President Mahama is in the Harvard region. Going for a speak out tour, he's telling the ordinary people of this country mm -hmm. that yes, I may have my plans for this country, but I don't know it all. I believe that there is something in you, you have various specific issues, you have your own desires, you have your own problems, you have your own expectations of government. Mm. I am coming to you because you matter. Speak out, I am listening, and I will ensure that whatever you say is incorporated into my program of action. Mm. And so that is the difference between the candidates and the campaign we are going to wage so let's just in clear. this year. So we are talking about the record. So we we'll compare what you did. This is the four years of Mahama. Yes. Not the eight years of NDC where he was vice. Yes. Or just the four years. Yes. And then the alternative you have based on what we have. And exactly. then you are saying the personality of the candidate. The personality. So let's start with... Honesty and humility. Great. A Greek, for example. The president was making a lot of comments, right? So it appears the one uh, village one dam, the planting for food and jobs, two key policy initiatives under the agri sector. One to see one warehouse as well. As a consequence, food prices have come down. The president said this. And then he also made comments about maize. Do you have a superior record on agriculture? What's your, what's, what's your record okay. on agriculture that you are going you to? You see, as I listened to President Okufuado speak on Thursday, I, w I kept wondering, Bernard, whether he was delivering a state of the nation address of I mean, an address on the state of Ghana and not another country. Because clearly the speech he delivered does not reflect the realities in Ghana today. It is full of falsehood. Mm. And I'm happy you want us to fact check some of the claims he made mm -hmm. and interrogate the issues. And I'm sure by the time we are done, your viewers will so appreciate that what the president engaged in was dishonesty, deception at its best. Number one, I agree. Let us look at growth for the agri sector. Mm -hmm. And here I'm going to refer to the 2020 budget statement presented by this government to the August House of Parliament, mm -hmm. specifically page 20, paragraph 75. Bernard, mm. on the agri sector, paragraph yes. 75 reads, Mr. Speaker, the average growth in the agri sector was 2.6% in the first half of 2019. Mm -hmm with 4.7% for the same period in 2018. Bernard, mm -hmm. in 2017, the agri sector grew by 6.1%. In 2018, there was a decline. It moved from 6.1% to 4.8% mm -hmm. in 2018. 
Yeah. Now, for the first half of 2019, it grew by 2.6%. Mm -hmm. That 2.6% is lower than the growth rate in the agri sector record, recorded at the end of 2016, which was a growth rate of 2.9%. And so if what government, the president would have us believe are true, if we are being told of planting for food and jobs Sorry, and all can, can the you interventions... Say, you are saying what? The, the 20... 19 half year yes. of 2.6 percent yeah. is lower than the end of 2016 2.9 percent. Yeah, currently. But why don't you compare end of why do you compare like for like 2019 is the year before election year? So compare See, that to 2015. So hold on. So compare, that's easier, no, right? No. What we need to do is to look at the trajectory of growth for the agri sector in the last three years. Okay. From a growth of 6.1 to 4.8, and now. To 2.6. Now, if the agri sector is doing well, as President Ekufuado will have us believe, why is growth for the sector on the decline? By the, end declining... of, by, by the end of year projection in that same budget was 6.9. Yes. So the 2.6 was going to rise. Hold on. By in 2018, by the first half, they had recorded a growth rate of 4.7. By the end of 2018, they recorded a growth of 4.8. Now you are recording you know, a growth rate of 2.6 for the first half of 2019. What makes you think that 6.9 is realistic? You should even be dreaming of 6.9. When, for that same period in 2018, you recorded 4.7. And at the end of the year, you only got 4.8. Now you are getting 2.6 mid-year. Okay, what if, what, if, what if they also said that in Clearly, 2014, in the middle of your administration, agree grew by 0 0.9, which is the lowest in the time series for the past five years. What will you say? You see, if you look at, you see, you 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 see, I'm on. just asking you. you see, 2014 was 0 0.9. You see, if you want us to use, um, that's why I said, if you want to compare, compare year to year. Otherwise, we can we can all pick different years. You see, hold on, right? It's not about picking years because there were also periods under the Mahama government that Agri recorded some significant growth figures. You understand? Now, what I am dealing with here has to do with the trajectory of growth for the Agri sector. This is a government telling you that our great sector is doing well. Farmers are prospering because of the planting for food and jobs program. We are investing in our great. And yet, the figures show that growth is on the decline from 6.1 in 2017 to 4.8 in 2018 to 2.6. That is for the first half of 2019. That is not something. But why are you limiting, that is your, why are you limiting yourself to the first half of the year? Because figures for the entire year are not out yet. They have not been reported in this. They, are, they, they will be published by April. You understand? So that is what we can work with. I that see. is what the Minister of Finance, you know, um, um, declared to Parliament. So if the sector is doing well, as the President is claiming, growth for the sector will not be declining. You see, they talk about planting for food and jobs. Yeah. Bear in mind that funding for the planting for food and jobs program, 125 million Canadian dollars, was secured by the Mahama regime as far back as 2015, 2016. For the same program? For a program called MAPEL, which they came and rebranded into Planting for Food and Jobs. Not just that, they really? inherited from the Mahama administration a fertilizer subsidy, a 50% fertilizer this subsidy MAPEL program. This MAPEL funding from the Canadian government, how much was it? $125 million, the same funding. For what, how many years? It was a grant. Because Planting for Food and Jobs is, has different components. So if you are saying that the exact amount that the your, yes. your at Mahama you got, can check this, you can check the budget for 2017, 2018, 2019. It is there. And the, grant the was, main source of funding for the planting for food and jobs program is the 125 million dollars Canadian dollars. I see. You understand? And we secured that funding. Who has the Canadians? Who has the Canadians to confirm hold that? Hold on. Not just that. <laughs> we were also implementing a 50 percent fertilizer subsidy program. Okay. Which they inherited. They decided to change the name okay. because they are masters but, in sloganeering. No ben, hold on. He said two things Into about Agri. But, but hold on, the, hold on. The, the things I put on the screen, just react to, there are two things he said about Greek on the screen. Hold on. We have, he said we haven't imported maize in the whole of 2019. You haven't refuted that. That is a bare face lie. I'm and he said, that he, said he, he showed that food prices were at their lowest in years. You haven't disputed that. Okay. So... So ben, If you have documents, I can take a break and you ben, react to that no. when we come back. All right, but you if don't you, have to take a break. Okay. I have in my hands yeah. statistics from the U.S. Department of Agri, All right. reported by Index Mundi. Mm -hmm. And you can check, in 2016 under President Mahama, when we were not boosting or planting for food and jobs, we only imported 
31,000 metric tons of maize. What kind of maize? 31,000 metric tons of maize. Maize is maize. No, there's yellow maize and there's white no, maize. The one is talking for about maize. One is for... Bottom line is that no, it is they, maize. That, they will indicate it there. No, it is no color. Is because yellow maize, the color is usually the maize for, is not. It's usually for feed. It's different the from the maize The bottom line is that 31,000 metric tons of maize okay. was imported into the country in 2016. Index in Mundi. 20... Okay. Yes, they are, and they are quoting the United States Department of Agriculture. Fair enough. I'll share this document with you. In 2019... The figures show mm -hmm. that government imported 50,000 metric tons of maize. And you can have this and check for yourself. Oh, look at it over And so it is not true mm -hmm. that not a single grain of maize was imported into this country in 2018 and 2019. The 2018 figures are also there. In fact, importation of maize has increased, not just maize. In 2016, Ghana imported rice to the tune of about 400 Three hundred million dollars. Okay, I have stories here to that effect. You can see rice imports AFD decreased four hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Anwar Bell. This story is dated Friday fourth, you know, uh, twenty seventeen, August twenty seventeen. Quoting, um, I mean, making reference to the fact that in twenty sixteen rice importation was around four hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Currently, according to the senior minister, Ghana is spending one point two billion dollars on rice importation. Annual rising potential okay. for 2019. So it is not. So true. you dispute that. Final point on that. Uh, Isoko, we, we interviewed Isoko this week and they corroborated the president's claim that food prices had come down. All they asked was that the, pre the government should continue to maintain whatever they were doing to keep the prices down. And I can show you the Isoko story. If, okay. you, if you don't mind. You see, so, on, 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 the, so the story is, just, just, just okay, since you're sure. also, let me also show you. Sure. Just for, uh, story, <laughs> February 21, food prices have reduced, but we must stabilize it. Isoko confirms president claims. Mm -hmm. Story by Jessica Ayi. Isoko Ghana, a provider of digital solutions and services for agriculture and data collection, has charged government to do more to stabilize the price of food and other commodities on the market mm -hmm. by boosting production. While Isoko admits that there has been a reduction in food prices, it wants the government to do more to keep the prices low all year round. This is what Isoko said on 21st. Which that, is that is Isoko. But for those of us who go to Malata, like Baumia <laughs> used to do in 2016, for those of us who go to Kejetia, yeah. Makola, we know that the price of kinky has gone up. We know that okay. the price of fried rice, you can ask your producers, they are looking at me, <laughs> has gone up. Whether it is yam, mm. whether it is cassava, whether it is gari, whether it is kubi, the prices have gone up astronomically. I thought, so, you, said, I thought so, you said you were coming to do fact-checking. Yes. And if you have a credible institution in Ghana that does aggregation of prices... I have not, I have not seen... Why are you... I, I, no, I need to be honest with you. I have not seen the aggregation of prices. And I don't know the food items they are talking about. And I don't know the markets they are talking about. But I know that I go to Malata to buy... But even, but even inflation, like but inflation figures don't bear you out. Inflation figures have come down. So inflation is the rate of uh, increase in food prices or other prices. The rate of increase. It's come down how? Because, because inflation has been rebased. So you are comparing a rebased inflation to a non-rebased inflation. But rebasing is regularly done almost every time. Were you not in this country? <laughs> when the economic waste of the MPP, Dr. Baumia, told us, yeah. at the time, inflation had dropped to single digit and had stayed there okay. for more than two years.